Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab on here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here and in today's video I'm finally bringing you my entire collection of Makeup Geek shadows. When I first decided to record this video I thought I had lost all of the footage because I'm looking at my laptop right here. Was going through it and realized I deleted all the videos off of there and I thought I had lost all my swatches. Completely forget. Flash drive over there. I had saved everything up so all of that footage was backed up. Once I realized I had it, I'm like, Torrance, you can either keep going with all the stuff you've been doing, or you could go ahead and finally get this video out. It may be late, but late is better than never. It can still give inspiration to my subscribers who have Makeup Geek shadows, or it could possibly allow you to go out and see if you could find any new shadows that you would like to add to your collection. Um, I know I checked the Target website. I didn't see anything there, but sometimes I can go into my local Target and see that they still have some of the quads left. I believe the same thing is true for JCPenney. So if for any reason you find yourself wanting to recreate this look, I'll make sure I leave all tools and products used in the description bar below. And before we get into this look, I'm gonna show you a view of all of my shadows as well as swatches of every color. And I'm gonna have all of those colors in the description bar. So if you ever want to know what shade was in what palette, you can check that out there. If you have a hard time, you know, trying to figure out what those were, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I'll make sure I'll answer that for you. But before we jump into this tutorial here, you know we got to go into those swatches. So go ahead, check those out, and we'll be right back. Oh, 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 
guys, it looks like we're recording again. As with all tutorials, all tools and product shields will be in the description bar below. I'm also going to make sure I leave all of the palette layouts and what their color shades are in the description bar. So if you want to grab any of these colors, you can go ahead and do so. I got to be honest with y'all. I think I may even say this in the intro, so I may cut this out, but I do not remember what those swatches look like. I did them so long ago, completely forgot about them because I thought that I, I thought that I deleted them off the laptop. Come to find out, I saved my swatches to a flash drive over there. So I have them and it's like torn. Since you got all your swatches, go ahead and do your tutorial. You may have people who still want to go ahead and get a look going. So I decided out of all of the palettes, I was going to use my custom palette here. Everything in here is a single, so if you want to buy just that one individual item, if it's still in stock, you will be able to do so. But I figured, Torrance, go ahead, use something you know you're comfortable with, and something rather neutral, because more than likely when I think of Makeup Geek, that's what I think of as old school, everybody building their own palettes, everybody trying to get as many neutrals as they could. And although I personally am a colorful person, most people who went for Makeup Geek were not. So... We're going to just go ahead and try to see how much we can use in this palette. I know for sure I can use at least the highlighter, the blush. I'm debating on the bronzer, but for the eyeshadows, we're going to get at least three mattes and three shimmers going just so we can use half this palette. That's usually my traditional style. So let me grab some brushes here and see which one we're going to start off with first. And let me pull up the layout of this palette because I do not remember exactly which shades I wear but I have them all written down here. So we're gonna start things off with a transition shade and our largest fluffiest blending brush. This shade here is Peach Smoothie. This is an iconic shade from Makeup Geek and we're gonna blow this all the way out. I wanna take this throughout the entire crease and blend it up as high as possible. And because I know Makeup Geek has nice pigmented shadows, we're gonna tap off some excess. I still haven't quite gotten the edge of this brush back to where it needs to be because I smashed it. More than likely next time I wash it, it'll come back. But I want to make sure I bring that down so it doesn't mess up my blend. I'm going to start all the way on the outer end because that's where I usually want things to be darkest. And we're just going to buff straight throughout our crease. Start off as low as we possibly can. And then you raise your brush as there's less product. And it'll be a smaller chance of having a harsh line just to diffuse those edges. And as you can see, honey, she beautiful. You can see that compared to this hat where there is nothing. You don't know how many times I know women who will take just peach smoothie straight throughout like this, put it on the lid, and be on their way out the dough. But y'all know I'm too dramatic for that. I'm too over the top for that. So I'm going to load my brush up again, tap off all excess, and we're going to go in and do that one more time just because I want to show you all that this shadow is buildable. It is pigmented, it is blendable, and you can see even though this is a transition shade, if you have, say, like a fair light or medium complexion, this may even be deep enough for the crease. Because I was able to build her up, and now that we have that shade there, I'm going to lift my brush up as high as it will go into the crease, and just will go back and forth to soften those up. Once again, I'm not afraid of blowing my colors out. I have hooded lids, and because I tend to cut my crease high, I like to build my crease shades high. Bam, she nice and beautiful. Be right back after I do this on the other side. Now that we have a fabulous transition, we have to go in and deepen up our crease. This shade here is called Cheetah Bear, another iconic shade. It used to be called Coco Bear, but the shade was renamed. And I'm telling you, if you have this shade, you might want to pull it back out because she's just as good as she's always been. And we're going to take that shade on a smaller blending brush and once again, tap off all excess. We can always come back for more if need be. Outer end, as low in the crease as we can get it, and build her up. And you can see how, just how quickly that shade builds up. And that is why I love it. It goes in, it gives you the depth and dimension that you want, but you can go in slowly without creating a harsh line. Like I haven't even diffused that line, I just went in and built it up. When I take, lift my brush up as high in the crease as I can. It'll soften up those edges, but it won't cover up the transition shade because the bristles aren't quite as wide. And you can see how this side is a little darker in the crease than this side here, 
but I want a little bit more. Once again, I gotta show y'all pigmentation, show you that it's buildable and blendable. We're gonna go in with one more layer. And you can see she gets even darker, but going in slow layers makes it a lot harder to create a mistake. Diffuse the edges by raising your brush a little bit. And because I know I'm a fan of a cat eye, we're going to swipe my brush on one side here. The other side doesn't have any extra product. And I'm just going to press that into the outer V. I usually go about one brush head width across. You can always go further if need be because we can always come back and cover any extra with our lid shades. But now that we have that there, you see we have it bare here for lid shades. And we can go back as far as we want to cover up our outer V, whether we want it wide or if we put product all the way out here, we can make it rather small. Be right back after I do this on the other side. For most people, this will be enough work for their crease, but because I have hooded lids and I like to be a little extra, I always like to take another step and deepen up my crease. Normally, I would take this shade here, Chocolate Wasted, because it's a nice dark brown, but I went in and got this shade here. I believe this is called pull my notes up right here baby because I don't forget that fast. I believe it's called Give Me The Dirt. Yes, that's what it's called. This shade here, Give Me The Dirt, is a very deep dark brown and I repurchased it because I dropped my last one and it cracked. So just because I know this is a brand new shade, I want to go in and grab him. So we're going to take our smallest blending brush of them all and we're going to load this up. Once again, knocking off all excess because baby, you see how dark that shade is against this white hair brush? So, we're going to prevent our mistakes. Knock all that excess off. Actually, we're going to go in and do that again. Start on the lowest part of our crease as before. Outer end. And go as low as we can, baby. And watch this. You see how before I even blended that out? That's dark brown. That ain't black, honey. This is why you take your time, you go slow, and you build carefully. We're going to take this low into the crease as usual, and then you slightly raise your brush as there's less product because it makes it easier to diffuse the edges. And because this brush is so small, we know it won't cover up our transition in our original crease shade, but this will definitely build up on top. And because this shade is so deep and so dark, we are not going to do a second layer of him. Honey, we do not want this to be an evening look, even though it may turn out to be that. For you all, this is evening. For me, baby, this is every day. And we're just going to raise that brush and diffuse those edges. If for any reason you don't like the way this looks, you can always go back in with your crease shade that we used for Cheetah Bear and buff that out. Actually, just to show you all what that looks like. You take no extra product on your brush. Let's say if you saw a patchy area or you thought it was just too dark, take the previous brush, go straight in, and use that to diffuse the edges. Because this is much larger, it'll diffuse that color out further. And because this has a lighter color on it, it'll slightly lighten that crease work. Like so. It may bring your uh, darkest shape up a little bit more, but it won't be quite as dark as if you just went straight in with another color. Then we're going to take this, sweep it on one side as before, and we're going to cover up the outermost plank of our outer V. We want there to still be some of that cheetah bear shade peeking through. So you can see our bear lid here, cheetah bear here, give me the dirt in the outermost plank. And we want to make sure every part of this part, uh, every part of this part. We want to make sure every part of this outer V and the back is covered with Give Me The Dirt. You don't want your bare skin peeking out because then it'll tell on you that you didn't get it all the way into that lowest socket part of your outer V. Gonna be back after we do this on the other side. All right, you guys, we are back, and ain't no point in lying to you all. I do have some fallout, as you can see, on this side. That darkest shade, trying to get in with that largest, fluffiest blending brush. She got me going, but this is why I like to do my eyeshadow before my base. And I'm sitting back like, Torrance, do you want to go in with that black right now? And I'm like, I do, but we're not going to. 
We're going to go ahead and cut our crease. So let me get me some NYX glitter adhesive. Y'all know she is bae. She is cheap and she is great. She gets the job done. Same thing with this Morphe M421 brush, honey. Small detail quality. You got to love them. And we're just going to squirt some of this on the back of the hand, honey, because I cut my crease high. Grab me a small little mirror. And I want to make sure I got plenty of product ready to go. All right, we are going to lay this down. And I like to start in the front and we are going to cut high. We do not want to cover up, give me the dirt. But I love a cut crease, honey. Many people say they find it hard to do it. I always tell them it's all about the practice because what I didn't realize when I was first doing it is I was always going along with my crease. And because I have hooded eyes, you could never see it. It would disappear as soon as I did it. Once I realized I could just cut above it and create whatever shape I want, baby, it was over. And I think I might have just slightly covered up a little bit of that cheetah bear, but we can go back and add it in if necessary. But I'll be right back after I do this on the other side, honey, because I'm getting excited. Lids are cut. It is time to go in, and I am going to use all three shades. We're just going to go ahead and get them going, pack them up on here. We're going to start off on the inner third with this shade here, Flamethrower. She's the darkest of them all, so I want her right there in the front. Then we're going to go over to the lightest shade here. For the center, we're going to use this shade here, Shimmer Shimmer. I normally would save my lighter shade for the inner eye corner, but I want to show you all what it looks like on the eye. Then for the outer third, we're going to come back and we're going to go to this shade here, Grandstand. I think Grandstand and Shimmer Shimmer are two of their most popular shades, but Grandstand is probably the one that I've used the absolute most, so I could not leave her out of this tutorial. First up, Flamethrower. For you warm tone girls, she's going to be the one, honey. You just take her, I'm going to press her right here. We already have a sticky base down, so I know I'm going to get the pigmentation from this. And I'm trying my hardest to only give it a third of the space because it's been plenty of times where I'm like, okay, Torrance, we're going to wear these three, four shades, and then this one shade will take its way all the way across. Do you see how vibrant and beautiful that is? You all know I'm not the biggest fan of orange tone shades, but she gives me like a beautiful orangey, bronzy, coppery look. And there are some slight gold flecks in it. They're not chunky or anything like that, but it gives it an extra bit of shine and you can see just how beautiful that is. Be right back. Okay. Now that we have that on, I've just flipped my brush over and we picked up the shade Shimmer Shimmer. This shade to me picks up easier on the brush, but it doesn't have quite the shine that I feel as if uh, Flamethrower has, but she's still absolutely beautiful. And she's going to bring some brightness. So we're going to put her right here. I'm going to start it off slightly covering Flamethrower because I don't want a harsh line. And we can diffuse things. And you can see, as soon as you just drop her down, she there. And I want that color right there at the center of the lid. I'm going to do this on both sides and then when I go in with my last shade, I'm going to have to use him to go ahead and soften those edges. But you can see Shimmer Shimmer, when she come through, she's not asking do you see her, she's telling you she's here. And just to make blending easier, we're going to knock off the excess color off my brush and just slightly Wiggle that toward the front to soften the edge because to me it looks like that is a sharp line on camera and in person And I just want to wiggle it right there just to diffuse it a bit And I just took my brush wiped it off on the back of my hand picked up the shade here grandstand and we're going to do the same thing start it off placing it down slightly covering shimmer shimmer that way it diffuses the edges of that color. But 
This time, we need to use this to diffuse into Shimmer Shimmer, as well as coming out and diffuse into our Cheetah Bear and Give Me the Dirt. Bam. I'm gonna go in with just a little more, just to make sure I can soften that up. Pow, pow. All right, you guys, I'm sitting back looking at the palette, looking at my reflection like, okay, what else can we do? Torrance. This is already over the top, dramatic enough. It's nothing else to do, especially go even darker because we ain't wearing black, but tell that to the camera. So what I'm going to do is cut away, finish off the face, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to finish off the lower lash line. All right, you guys, we are back, and I'm looking at the camera, and I'm sitting here telling myself, this look is different for me. I'm someone who, I'm not going to say I don't like experimenting with new makeup. It's just I have things that I like. It's hard to get me off of them. So to look at this and be like, baby, you did not follow nothing that you normally do. And this still looks nice. So I'll go ahead and tell you everything that I used off camera. If I forget anything, remember all tools and products will be in the description bar below. But first up, we did go in with the face. I always, always, always contour my face with my KVD contour powder. This is the shade Subconscious. I love it so much. It sits in this huge Z palette by itself just to make sure he's always here on the counter with me. But today I was like, you know what, Torrance? We have this face palette. We want to try to use as much of it as we can. So instead of using that contour shade, I use this bronzer. Now, I know bronzer and contour are not the same thing. One is used to warm up the skin, the other is used to add definition. But I wanted to go ahead and make sure I use this powder just because I didn't have a clear memory of exactly how it felt on the skin. She's beautiful, she's blendable, she's buildable. The only thing I can say about any and all of these face products is the fact that they are powdery and they do have some kick up. I wouldn't say they're like ABH level powdery, but the build, the blend, the pigmentation, beautiful. Once again, I used it to contour my nose, my cupid's bow, my cheeks, forehead, and all of that. It is a bronzer, but I did use it as a contour. She's fabulous. Highlighter, same thing, beautiful. I wanna move this down, you can see that glow there, that shine on the cheek is beautiful. I think I may have one or two other highlighters from Makeup Geek, but they were not this shade here, which I thought was absolutely perfect for me. So those other ones I have, but more than likely I will, uh, I will declutter those simply because they're not my shade and I'm not gonna use them on myself. For blush, normally I always go in with a pink blush, but I told myself, Torrance, we're doing something different. This is a warm tone look. Go ahead, use this peach blush. I'm absolutely happy I did because she is beautiful. She's nice, she's soft, she's buildable. I think I did two, either two layers. I possibly may have gone in with three, but you can see, you can tell that color's there. She's not overpowering, she's beautiful. I think that blush shocked me more than anything because I already knew I loved that highlighter. Um, what else do we have going on? Mascara. Wanted to pull out something I knew I tested before because it was in my mascara drawer, but I did not have a clear memory of it. This is the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. I figured since we're playing with brands that are either old school, discontinued, things like that when we're thinking of Makeup Geek, I decided I wanted to pull out an old school mascara. Um, how can I say it? I know, I believe they came out with this. Everybody was comparing this as a dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I really didn't care for the Too Faced one. For this one here on the lower lash line, She's okay, but she's a little difficult to work with on the top. She's beautiful, but she's very thick. So if you don't like thick mascaras and the shape of this brush head for this one is really, you know, different. I like her, but do I see myself repurchasing her? Probably not because I have essence. For brows, instead of going back to my old school ABH, I've already used that one up. I'm going to try to finish up this Fenty Beauty one. I absolutely love her. This is the one that I wore, I think, when I went skydiving about two or three years ago. If it wasn't skydiving, I either wore this or the wax. I'll just leave that video right here so you all can check that out. But she's beautiful. Clear bra gel from ABH. Never lets us down. For the lips, I figured, okay, Makeup Geek is a brand from Michigan that's closing things down. 
what is a brand from Michigan that is on the up and coming like they are doing bigger, better things than ever before? The Lip Fire. So for them, I decided Torrance, do something you never do and that is wear a dark lip. Every now and then, I might do a black one. I might scare myself and do a red one, but it's very rare that I just wear a dark brown lip, whether they be glossy or matte. And because I have so many of them, I'm like, Torrance, you have to pull them out. So their current lip liner, you can pick this up anytime because it's permanent, is the straight up one. I grabbed this because it has a slight red tone. I figured it'll help blend in with that eyeshadow color there. This red shirt. I'm sitting back thinking, Torrance, more than likely you should have worn a brown shirt today. The red one was the closest one. I just put it on. For the lip gloss, this is discontinued because this was a collab with Justine Sky. You can check out my tutorial of that video right here. That was one of the first few that I've done. This is called One Love. As you can see, she is a dark, grassy, like really rich, reddish tone brown. She's beautiful. I do only have liner and gloss on here, so I just lined the outside of my lips, filled this on on the inside, and I'm like, Torrance, I think I may have worn this once just for the tutorial, but other than that, I have it, and she's beautiful. I think the deeper your complexion is, the more prettier this will be. But this is a, it looks like a beautiful chocolatey brown on my lips. And I'm not mad at it because I'm someone who always goes for lighter, brighter colors. But I'm sitting back like, okay, Torrance, makeup is almost done. We got a little bit more to do because I still want to go in, do my lower lash line. We still haven't highlighted our inner corner and brows. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so what I think we're gonna do is just repeat the matte shades on the lower lash line that we did on the top. So more than likely, we're gonna start off up here with Peach Smoothie. We're gonna use this on our largest, fluffiest pencil brush. Then we're gonna take a smaller pencil brush. We're gonna go down to this shade here, Cheetah Bear, smoke that out. And then with a push liner brush, we're gonna take this shade here, give me the dirt, push that all the way up underneath the lashes to give us a nice smoky effect. And from there, I'll decide what we're gonna do next. And because this is the lower lash line, tap off all excess. This shade here, I'm not really worried about leaving a mess or anything. It's just, I want this blend to be beautiful for our next shade. So per usual, start on the outer end and we wanna make sure this color connects to those top shades. And we're just gonna buff her out. spending a little extra time making sure that buff right there on the outer end meets so that way I don't have a gap of color and now that I'm satisfied with the buff there I don't mind starting from the front end here just to build that up if you aren't sure about your blending I will still stay on the outside and work your way in but just that right there is giving me a nice little blend of color I know I can tell the difference of this in person, but I'm not quite sure it'll show up on camera until we get to the next shade. Now we have a smaller pencil brush, our shade Cheetah Bear. We're gonna start on the outer end and we're gonna buff her out as well. And yes, ma'am, that is where the color is coming through for me. This, I'm telling you, every time I go in and I deepen up a shade, I get excited. Even though I don't have dark circles on the under part of my eye, because I have a hooded lid and I'm always worried about deepening things up there, I'm usually worried about deepening things on the lower end as well. I'm gonna make sure this connects here. And you can see it's a little more smokier on this side than it is on this side. I think because I do have that one under eye crease under this eye, they are looking sort of the same. You all remembered I slipped and fell after I broke my leg, had a big knot and a hole right here. I think I'll leave that picture right here. So unfortunately, the crease underneath this eye went from the center and connected all the way to where that mark was. And although the mark is barely noticeable even without makeup anymore, the crease that it's left surely is. On most days, two colors on my lower lash line will be quite enough but today we're doing the most. So I'm gonna take my push liner brush, our darkest shade, give me the dirt, and we're gonna work very slowly to smoke out our lower lash line. I wanna push this as close to 
to my lashes as I can get it. And I want to show you all, even without buffing it out, just get it on that outer half. You see how dark this eye is compared to this side now. But we already here, honey, and we're going to take her all the way over. Had to dip in a second time because I want to make sure we get nothing but pigmentation from the beginning. And work slowly, connect it on the outer end because, baby, a color this dark underneath the eye can cause some issues. Okay, and just to make sure I don't have any fallout, I'll just take any brush. This is the one I used to set my under eye and just sweep right underneath there just to make sure I don't have any fallout that's going to try to set. Last step for the eyes is highlighting. Because we've already used this shade here, Shimmer Shimmer, which is lighter than my face highlighter, I'm going to go ahead and use this for the inner corner highlight. But I think this is going to be a little too bright, so then we're going to step over here to our face highlighter, and we're going to use this to highlight underneath the brow bone. I completely forgot that I told y'all earlier. This color picks up extremely easily with a brush, so I'm going to have an extremely bright inner corner. I may even have to take some of that off. Like, look at that. Just blinded for no reason, honey. I'm talking deer in the headlights bright. There's no way somebody gonna tell you they didn't see this color coming at them. So what we're gonna do is wipe off the excess color on the back of my brush, I mean back of my hand. Go in, sweep up some of this face highlighter and we don't need much because I just want just enough to create a shine and I want you all to see this here. See what my brow looks like now. I just take let's see that right there. You see how that shine just barely picked up. It's enough to give you definition where you've carved out your brows, but also give some lift because it creates the tiniest bit of shine in that area. Once I have it at the arch, I just try to buff out the edges. I don't want it to be a streak of highlighter underneath the brow. And that'll do it. All right, now I'm sitting back looking like, is there anything else to do? Time to set everything, so grab your sprays because you know I'm about to grab mine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter, so things will last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good time. I'm going to give this a few more moments to dry and I'll be back to show you all the final look. And this is the final look. I'm going to go ahead and give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you all, honey, she looking fabulous. What is getting to me is how beautiful and how red tone this shade here is looking, honey. In the pan, she's like an orangey coppery shade. She may have some red undertones to her, but by using these warm shades, putting this red shirt on, and using bronze instead of contour, telling me this eye is not giving you a reddish hue to her. She is beautiful. Let me go ahead and pull this back just so y'all can get a full, you know, view of this face and this glow because today I went in, I just been setting my makeup lately instead of baking. I'm personally somebody who absolutely loves baking. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but with me adding retin -A to my skincare routine, things been a little drier, a little flakier, and I do not have the time and energy to go in and be trying to buff that extra powder out. So I just been setting things and I ain't gonna lie, on camera, the glow is resonated because, baby, I'm fighting dry under eye as we speak right now. It's this one patch of skin right there on the tip of the nose. I want to see if I can come closer so you all can see it. She is fighting this clean on, and I am not going to scratch it. I'm not going to move it. She's going to have to sit right there with us. But I'm here to let y'all know, honey. Makeup geek may be gone, but with my collection, hey, we're going to still be using them. I don't see me being able to purchase anything new because they aren't going to come out with anything else. I purchase all the singles I want. You all have a preview of my collection, so if there's any other shades you would like to see from the brand, just go ahead and make sure you leave me a comment down below. Um, what else? 
I'm looking around. I'm trying to figure everything out. Oh, please let me know also if there's any other brands that you would like to see on my channel. I'm not sure, but more than likely by the time you see this video, I would have announced that I am going on a no buy. So I'm going to be using things from my collection. But if you check out that previous video, which I'll leave linked right here above, I do have a new haul with some new products here several different brands to go from several different you know products to try out i'm actually looking at those items right here on the side of me because i'm about to record a video uh showing you all all of those but we've been talking long enough i got to step outside and let somebody see this makeup i know i have to go i believe office max or office depot because they had a clearance sale on some tide last night gonna be hitting up the laundromat half off on them so with nothing else, I hope you all truly did enjoy this look. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're also subscribed because I do have another giveaway coming up when I hit 1,000 subscribers. Um, I'm looking around like, is there anything else to do besides clean and keep recording for the rest of the day? And I don't think so. So with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.